How does your brain defend a certain body weight? How do signals from your brain make it more difficult to lose weight when dieting? Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Conley, and today I like to review how your body uses energy from food. We will see how your body tries to maintain a set weight. We'll also see how chemical signals to the brain make it difficult, but not impossible to maintain long-term weight loss. The amount of energy that your body uses every day is called your total daily energy expenditure. The components of your total daily energy expenditure include several different things. So first of all, your basal metabolic rate or BMR which accounts for 60 to 80% of the calories that you burn every day. And next, also contributing is the thermal, thermic effect of food, which is the energy that your body uses to digest and absorb fat, carbohydrates, and proteins that you eat. Exercise activity thermogenesis, or EAT, eat, is the energy used during exercise. The next component is non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT, NEAT. Um, this measures the amount of energy that you use while engaged in activities other than exercise, such as fidgeting or walking around the house, just everyday activities. It is usually difficult to maintain weight loss because your body will try to maintain your typical weight. After weight loss, several things occur in the body that make it more difficult to further limit food intake and to burn additional calories with exercise. So when you lose fat cells, the level of leptin in your blood decreases. So recall that leptin is a hormone that's actually produced by your fat cells. The low leptin level makes your brain think that you're low in stored energy and that you're below your natural weight. Thus, your brain will then tell your cells to save energy instead of wasting it. You will burn fewer calories when you're exercising and your basal metabolic rate will decrease. Your body will use energy more efficiently in almost every physical task, meaning that you will waste less energy as heat. Because your body is trying to save energy, you will want to eat more as well. The bottom line is that your brain controls your body's energy balance. Hormones released by your fat cells, pancreas, stomach, and gut act on your hypothalamus, which is an area in your brain and other brain centers to communicate the status of your current energy balance. These hormones, including leptin, insulin and ghrelin will try to maintain homeostasis or balance in your body, meaning that your body will try to maintain your previous weight after recent weight loss. Most people who successfully maintain long-term weight loss exercise regularly. Physical exercise strains your muscle, creating temporary inflammation and forces muscle to rebuild so that it is stronger. Researchers have discovered a hormetic effect of exercise, meaning that a low amount of stress actually benefits your muscle and decreases inflammation in the long term. Recall that inflamed fat is the real culprit behind obesity-related disease. 
In addition, regular exercise fine tunes your body and allows energy and oxygen to get to the cells that need it more quickly and more efficiently. Exercising muscle needs more oxygen, which is carried by the blood to your muscle cells. So new blood vessels are formed in muscle and fat tissue with regular exercise. This increases oxygen supply to fat cells, making it less likely that these fat cells will die due to lack of oxygen. And this is good because dead fat cells are attacked by your body's immune cells and, and actually at that point they'll increase the inflammation levels in your body. Physical exercise also strengthens your blood vessels, helping them transport blood and oxygen more efficiently. Monitoring your weight on a regular basis is probably the most effective way to track progress in weight loss. Religiously counting calories is really not very accurate considering that U.S. federal law allows a margin of error up to 20% in calorie counts on nutritional labels. It is also challenging to accurately count the number of calories burned during exercise, especially on an individual level. Depending on the current energy balance in your body and whether or not you are dieting, your cells may be trying to waste or save calories. Consequently, the number of calories that you burn during exercise will vary based on this status you know, in, in your body's energy balance. You burn most of your calories just by staying alive. Remember, this is the basal metabolic rate. Your body needs a large amount of energy to provide fuel to your organs, to maintain your body fluid levels and just the right concentrations, and to keep your body in working order. So, like we mentioned, this is the energy that is consumed by your basal metabolic rate. In summary, it is often difficult, but definitely not impossible to maintain weight loss over time. This is because hormones such as leptin released by the fat cells will act on the hypothalamus in the brain to conserve energy. If your brain perceives that you are below your natural or typical weight, you are more likely to achieve long-term weight loss and prevent diabetes by avoiding processed foods with added sugar, as these foods will release too much glucose into your blood way too quickly. By eating natural and unprocessed foods, you'll make it easier for your body to process glucose because there'll be less of it entering your blood. If you consume a lot of processed food, your body will be unable to process all the glucose entering your bloodstream and it will be stored as fat, probably in your liver. As you gain more and more fat cells, your insulin and leptin levels will increase, making it more likely that you will develop insulin resistance and leptin resistance. If you accumulate too many fat cells, it also becomes more likely that these individual fat cells will become too big and will die off due to lack of oxygen. These, when fat cells die, as we mentioned, that specialized immune cells called macrophages will suck them up and release attack chemicals such as interleukin-6 otherwise known as IL-6, which will first cause inflammation in the, in the fat cells, and then that inflammation will leak out into the rest of the body. Inflammation is what makes obesity so deadly. To recap, we talked about how your body uses energy. 
we reviewed how your brain ultimately controls your body's energy balance. We discussed how your brain sends signals to the rest of your body to maintain a certain weight. We saw how processed foods can damage your body. It is important to monitor your weight instead of counting calories when trying to lose weight, just because it's, it's a more accurate method. Exercise is also key to long-term weight loss for the many reasons that we mentioned previously. Thank you for listening. I hope that this was helpful for you.